All right, guys, we're back. We had a broadcast interruption here, but we'll just keep rolling with the second part of the broadcast. We're with Johnny Athana here at the Davines headquarters, and we'll pick right back up where we left off. Sorry if we, if we dropped off on some of you guys there. So basically, um, once you understand the muscles, so this muscle here is called the sternocleidomastoid muscle, and technically it comes through here, but it also goes down the back and across. And by understanding the muscles, what you're doing is by tilting the head, you're stretching the, the muscle, which makes the skin much tighter. So what enables you to do it? Enables you to get your scissors right in there and really go against the grain. And if you want to get it super, super clean, um, what you've got to do is you've got to look at how the hair grows and just go in the opposite direction. And what happens is the blade picks the hair up and cuts it nice and tight. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to start to just gently elevate the hair with my comb, the wide tooth of the comb. I've got this fantastic um, Ceci bon. Ceci bon white comb, which um, has been gifted to me by Gerard. We've got a friend who uh, calls it the Ceci Balm, which I think is cool. But you know what he does? He cuts out every other tooth of the wide side. Oh, really? So he's got a bit wider wow. and he files it down. Okay. Yeah. So guys, thanks for joining us again. Sorry if you got interrupted in the last broadcast. We had a great broadcast going, but sometimes, you know, the interwebs and the Facebook and the Wi-Fi backfires on us. But we're picking up right here with part two. We're here with Johnny Athana at the uh, Davines headquarters in New York, working on a really cool expressive shape from his wiggle collection. You can see that incredible sectioning and the shape that he's put in there. So kind of completed with, with side number one, at Definitely. least the basic shape. Definitely. Now moving into side number two. So I'm using the um, Day Day uh, product from Davines, which for me is an amazing, amazing cutting lotion. Um, I use it on everything, curly hair, straight hair, wiggly hair. <laughs> so I like, to, uh, I like to really use it a lot, and you can't over, overload the hair with this, this product. Um, it's a really, really, really good cutting tool. So for those true, pure cutters out there, it's a really cool product to use. Um, also, one more thing I'm doing, just before we carry on, is I'm making sure that the, the, the hair that's shortest on the roundness of the head is also wet, and then I comb it down, and then I leave it. And what happens is the warmth from the head naturally dries the root, which then gives me the control for later on. So now I'm going to work onto my second side. So the wiggle wise, uh, if I aim it towards the light, if you go over that way, it'd probably be easier for you to. So I need to basically mirror this idea of this kind of wiggle all the way through the haircut. So I'm going to come from here and I'm going to leave an area of length, which will be this area here. And I'm going to basically follow the zone in which I cut before. Now, the, I've, I haven't really got any major restrictions um, with um, Charlie's hair apart from... Don't shave it. Don't, no shaving. <laughs> so I'm quite, she's quite open to what I do and she wants her hair to look cool. She wants her hair to look different. So I'm having a lot of fun, but I need to basically mirror that zone. So if I comb it forward now, you should be able to see the zone and how I'm isolating it. So again, thanks everyone for joining us again. Sorry about getting uh, disconnected with the last broadcast. We got half of the haircut on the first broadcast. We'll get the other half right here. If you could all do us a favor and hit that share button so everybody that was watching knows that we're broadcasting again, we'd really appreciate that. Just down on the bottom, hit the share button. Uh, Roberta Hogan, thanks for joining us. The products that uh, all around us are Davines products, which is an incredible line of hair care that's sold globally based in Parma, Italy. Um, and they're all about ingredients and creating sustainable, beautiful products and really supporting craft hairdressing, which is one of the reasons why we're here. And then the product that he was using for cutting Roberta was called Day Day. Yeah. It's a hair mist that Johnny loves to cut with. Yeah, yeah big time, big time. I use it every, all the time. And I think that's the beauty of um, the range, this particular range. Uh, it's the essential so, range. Roberta, if you want to know how to spell it, it's just like this. <laughs> Davinez, how's that? <laughs> So, she asked how you spell it, so we might as well make it clear. Definitely, definitely. So now I'm going to come and come around this way. Great, thanks for joining us, guys. The builders, are, the, the viewers are building back up. I know that everyone was intensely interested. Now let's really Sorry, get back guys. into this technical lesson here. Okay, so basically I've gone from the front now, and I'm mirroring the same wiggle, but on the other side. Yeah. So in effect, what I'm going to have is an area of length that runs through the center of the haircut. Now I'm gonna start on this side, which is my right side, this is my second side, but I'm gonna start in the back. Now I'm gonna ignore this center bit, which is basically gonna be the center bit of my wiggle. So I'm gonna start a brand new cutting line, and I'm gonna start it on this side, okay? Now the key here is choice of length, and you can see how the hair is bending through here. So 
This side, I'm actually going to start with a slightly flatter cutting line. So I'm going to start slightly more towards the vertical in regards to my section. If I pivot round a little bit, you'll get the right better. Okay, like Chicani that. Maria, we have one of your uh, Greek patriots. Uh, she's definitely uh, Greek. Do you want to say hello to Maria, Maria from Cali Greece? Kalimera, Kali Maria. Kalimera. Okay. I love the, the, the international followers. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> no, it's really not. I mean, having people take time out of their lives to watch is, is such an incredible compliment. So I really appreciate it. So I'm coming down and I'm keeping all my external length and keeping that completely. And I'm basically taking this shape down quite tight and I'm going quite flat internally. Okay. Now this is a really cool thing to do if you want the hair to bend and hug the head. The flatter you go, people assume that you have to graduate the hair in order for it to basically have a curvature feel to it. But if you actually flatten it, it will collapse on the scalp which will give you that shape naturally. Especially if you cut the outline in afterwards, huh? Big time. I mean, it's a beautiful way to cut like a bob shape to go in and kind of collapse that bottom and then put in the baseline and you get this really weightless, you know, I remember being a young hairdresser at Sassoon and seeing that and thinking, like, how do you do that without a weight line? And it, it just makes like a whole different feeling. I mean, that's a great tip. Now, how do you, what do you mean exactly when you say um, flat? So the angle of the cutting line is much squarer. So it basically, the, if I go for more of a triangular cutting line, I'm going to build a slightly heavier corner. But by working slightly squarer, I'm maintaining my external length, but collapsing the internal shape. And the reason why that's happening is simply because of the head. The head is more protruding through this area, so it's closer to my cutting line, closer to the actual uh, choice of length. Thanks. And you know, I think um, you, you at Alawan have a great way of explaining this by using diagrams and using these incredible head forms. Maybe we can get a quick shot of these. Yeah, definitely. And then some of the um, some of the diagrams that Johnny did even to pre prepare for the haircut. Yeah, I'm going to finish yeah. my diagram when I'm done. Yeah, it's got some great diagrams. I think, you know, obviously, you know, maybe a lot of hairdressers haven't had experience doing that kind of blueprinting haircuts. Um, how important is it to you to do these head sheets and think through your approach? I'm so glad you asked that question, Yana, because for me, it's like the fundamental. If you can, if you can draw a three-dimensional shape on a two-dimensional surface, you understand it. Yeah. And mapping something out, I mean, my problem, if you look at my diagram over there, is I've only mapped out a slight amount because I, I didn't know what I was going to do yet. So the rest are just making yeah. it up as you go along. Yeah. But, but sometimes that's enough if you've got 30% of it, the other 70%. Yeah. So I've obviously got my initial wiggle running yeah. through my shape, and I've started my first couple of sections off. I'm gonna, what I'm going to do, once I've got my basic shape in, I'll go back to my diagram and I'll talk you through it. But this is a massive thing. Sometimes you just need a good starting point, right? Yeah. 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 For me, it's a, for, for us at Alilon, it's such an important way of understanding shape. And it's a fundamental, a fundamental way that we train our team. It's so interesting. When I was a young apprentice at Sassoon and I was trying to understand um, like a men's square layer mm -hmm. and the concept of a corner over the head, it never clicked to me until I was drawing it again and again and again. And then I just had that moment of understanding. Visualizing it. Yeah. And I think, again, it, not that you have to be great at head sheets to be a good hair cutter, no, but it really helps you understand. Definitely if you helps. want to be a great teacher, yes, I think you really have to get into head sheeting because that allows you to explain it, not just do it. You know what you just said? That's really, really interesting. I'll explain to you why. Because you just said, you know, if you want to be a good teacher. And one of the things that I love about uh, social media is it gives so many people great exposure. But one of the things that I find quite challenging sometimes is the idea that with social media, all of a sudden everybody's a, t a teacher. Right. Everyone's got a platform Everyone's and a microphone. Platform. And, yeah. and one of the things that I think we've got to worry, we've got to be careful about is that I believe you can teach anyone anything and everyone should share and an assistant can teach another assistant something and a, anyone can learn from everybody. But if we're charging for it, we need to really be at the top of the game. We need to really understand what we're doing. And if diagram training is something that every educator needs to understand because it helps people visualize right. everything and plan everything. Right, and if people are paying you to teach them something, they need a little bit more than just watching you cut hair. Yeah, yeah they need to have like yeah. a diagram and a breakdown that adds value. Um, I think there's a difference between a teacher and an educator. Yeah, that's a great way of putting it. Lots of love coming back in. Um, Gina, who's another one of our longtime supporters. Hey, Gina. Hey, Gina. She wants to know, um, what are you guys going to be doing in the U.S., Alalon? Do you have any education planned, anything special? Yeah, we've got, um, we're going to be doing um, some seminars over here. I'm going to be doing a bit of an American tour towards the end of the year, where basically I'm going to do like four or five different cities. Uh, 
and then the plan is to set some dates and what we will do is on the Alon Unplugged events we will basically talk about the actual dates themselves where you can go where to book the classes and so forth but for anybody who's interested in any kind of education via Alilon, um, it's really important to understand the journey of the, of the Alilon curriculum because you can't just do any kind of course. You have to start the, with our primary shapes course, which is the main course, um, probably our most important course. Um, the reason for that is because it's quite theory-based and it helps you understand the language in which we use Alilon, the way we look at shape. It's almost like a prerequisite class. Yeah, yeah I, I think so what, what you've got, done, what Alalon has done so incredibly is you've built like a whole culture and a way of, of speaking and a language, and you've kind of made it your own. I know it's we all started at Sassoon and we learned certain things there, but you've definitely evolved it to have your own language. I hear you so many terms that are very proprietary to what you do, and I think that that's, that's great. You're elevating the craft, which really, is awesome. We're really trying, man. We're really trying. I think the thing is, when I was, when I was 16, um, you know, and I was a young budding hairdresser. I was the kind of kid who'd be like, so, so, so what are you doing? So, so why are you doing that? So why that angle? Why not that? Why yeah. not? And Some people wouldn't answer, would they? Yeah, they'd be like, just watch and yeah, shut up. Yeah, yeah, it'd be like, just, just if, watch if, and shut up. If you watch, you'll understand, or with, with time you'll get it, yeah. or, you know, and I'm just like... Oh. It can be explained, though. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and then when, and then the other thing, the other problem I had was, in one salon, I worked in an incredible salon, um, and in the salon that I worked in, I'd ask Sarah, I'd ask Peter, I'd ask Paul the same question. I'd get three different answers. So right. as a kid, I was always lost, and I just wanted to understand. I didn't want to. Yeah. There wasn't grey. Yeah, there I was, was very, was very similar background. Yeah, yeah. every every, every hairdresser you speak to has yeah. the same thing, has the same right. experiences. And then some of us like really went into education to try to make a difference. Exactly. There. Yeah. Exactly. Right, let's get back to this technique because it's it's so incredible, and you're so great at teaching. Let's get back to some teaching and some cool, education man. here. So basically, uh, I'm f flying, following through my shape from the nape. I'm coming through to the uh, front recession area on the right-hand side. And my cutting line now, I don't know if you noticed, but it's actually following the contour of the hair now. So as the shape of this connection has been introduced through here, my cutting line has started to change from a square cutting line. When I get to this point, it's starting to round off. So in effect, it's square through the side and round through the top. That way it hugs the head again. And can you explain the wiggly section again for those of the, uh, the viewers that are just joining us? Cool. So the idea is this, this zone through the top, this wiggling piece of this connection, will pop at the end of the haircut. At the moment, I'm just basically working away from myself. And if you notice, I'm, I'm trying desperately not to use clip, uh, sectioning clips because uh, I really like to try and work from wet to dry and I really like to avoid getting any kind of marks on the hair. And also, uh, by, by forcing yourself to not use sectioning clips, you force yourself to work clean. And it's a very, very fundamental part of our, our education when we teach either in courses or to the staff. Yeah, make sure you keep the hair consistently damp, Completely. make sure you really kind of comb it properly. Yeah. And, and your combing is so beautiful in the way that you're kind of organizing the hair every time, getting that even, beautiful tension, incredible. Uh, guys, thanks for joining again. Sorry about the, if you were watching before, the disconnection with the first broadcast. I'm gonna ask you again if you hit that share button to get all those people that got booted off the first one because we're, we're starting to get everyone back. So hit that share button so everyone can know that there's a part two happening. Here. Thanks, guys. So, I'm working through to the, the recession area now. So now my section, my section from being vertical has slowly, slowly, almost pivoted from this point into slightly more of a diagonal. That way what I'm doing in effect is my cutting line will automatically create my external shape through the front here. And I've gone a little bit tighter on this side. So my shape will really follow the contour of the hairline on this side. And again, really grooming, really, really groom that hair. Realistically, you shouldn't have to cut the same piece of hair twice. You should comb it once and cut it once and then move on. We have a saying called Cocomo. Um, Say that again now, because I know Jay Mahmood likes that one. Isn't yeah. that his cat's name, Cocomo? <laughs> <laughs> so basically, Cocomo means comb once, cut once, move on. And the idea is that if you cut, have to cut the hair the second time, technically we cut it wrong the first time, so we have to really try and focus on getting it right the first time. And that helps you with speed. A lot of people, when they come to courses, they say to us, oh, well, you know, in the salon I've only got a certain amount of time but really if you if you train yourself really hard and you really focus on the detail you should be able to get yourself to a point where you can cut the hair once and you don't really have to check it because you've you've trained yourself to a point where you're really comfortable with your technique and you can um, you can reassure yourself that 
your choices of lengths are working. We've got a question from Deborah Martinez about the comb. Hey, what Deborah. type of comb is it, and, and why do you like it for such fine, clean sectioning? Good, very good question. Um, this beautiful comb was gifted to me by Gerard uh, before we started the broadcast. And this is a Cessibon. Um, this is my favorite comb, the Cessibon. Um, and the reason why, I know they can buy it from Hairbrain, is that right? They can, Hairbrain.pro. Yeah. Okay. In the um, traditional green or yeah, in the Hairbrain exclusive white. Yeah, so um, basically the, the reason why I like it so much is because I, I've got a really tight area which I can work really clean with and then I've got a wider area which I can take my sections with. Uh, it's, it's basically carbon so it avoids static which is a massive thing for me because I tend to work on dry hair quite a lot. Let me just bring the attention back to what I'm going to do now. I'm going to basically carve the hairline and I'm going to make it a bit more of a feature here. So I'm going to really go into that shape. So now starting to kind of push it and, and get your expressive part in after yeah. you've got your shape and it seems like the outline is really where you customize and, and make something unique happen. Yeah, I think the, the, one, of the one of the beautiful things about um, working like this where you're working a bit more expressively is you don't have to worry about rules. You can actually break the rules a little bit. So the, the main rules I've put in are my basic mechanics, the technical point. But now is the time when I actually have a bit of fun. So one of the uh, things that... Uh, we looked at before uh, was one of the images from our child's play collection and um, Charlie really liked one of the specific haircuts that we did uh, it was like a, a pink child's play haircut and what I'm going to do is I'm going to play with that a little bit now but I think what I might do actually I might wait until the hair dries because it's got a bit of a movement to it so I'm not going to do that now I'm going to do it once the hair is dry I'm just going to remove any little baby hairs and make sure this is super clean so now, externally through the back, do the same thing. Comb the hair down with the wide end of the comb. That way I'm not forcing the hair into any un unnatural position, okay? And then I'm gonna work from here, I'm gonna work back into my shape and I'm gonna cut away the bend. So what do you look for when, you know, as you're cutting the outline, the hairline? You know, how high can you go and how deep do you go with the point cutting? Any tips that you can give on that I think would definitely help everyone. Definitely. Um, I would say to people, don't be scared. One of the biggest things people, I find when we, when we go around the world teaching is people are scared to make mistakes. They're scared to make the wrong decisions. They're scared to choose the wrong lengths. And one of the um, advices I would give them is never be scared of hair. At the end of the day, it we, grows. We, yeah, yeah, it grows, it changes, we're in control of it. So one of the beauties of um, deciding choice uh, where to position the line was actually the bend in the scalp. So I know this is the mastoid process bone, and I know it dips in here. So I know if I cut it just after the bend of the bone, it will naturally hug the bone, which will go in my favor. If I cut it on the bone, it, what will happen is it will thatch out, it will become quite static and quite kind of pointy. If I cut it after the bone, where the neck starts to then have a bend to it, the hair will start to flick. So I'm basically cutting the hair just after the mastoid process bone. That's a, a quite a decent tip I'd, I'd give people when they're deciding choice of length in this area. And that's why it was so important to kind of feel the head shape before. You Big spent time. a lot of time analyzing the head shape Big and time. looking at Charlie's bone structure, Big not time. just her face, but and I think sometimes that's people forget that. They think bone structure just means the face, yeah. like the cheekbones. It's yeah. going to make your cheek. But the, you know what I've believed after 26 years of hair cutting is if you can kind of understand the occipital bone, the mastoid process, and try to do things that are beautiful there, it naturally relates beautifully to the face because it's Without all doubt. like a harmonic kind of convergence of, uh, of beauty. Yeah, we have something called um, fixed, when we teach people, we teach people based on fixed and variable analysis. So before they even start thinking about what haircut to do or what shape they do, they have to basically analyze their fixed and variable analysis. And when we talk about that, what we mean is fixed analysis are the things that we physically cannot change, i.e. bone structure, growth patterns, density, texture, this, these type of things. Uh, variable analysis are the things we can change, i.e. choice of length, positioning of weight, balance, symmetry, all these type of things. So um, one of the main things we tend to focus on is this idea of really understanding the surface that you're working on really really understanding the form in which you're placing your shape or your idea on because the reality is it can really go against you if you don't analyze it 
but not just their bones, it's like things like the scars or, or, or any pimples or indentations on the scalp or protrusions on the scalp. It all affects your choice of length. If you can talk to us again about how you work on the skin there with the scissor, obviously sometimes people say, you know, do you use a clipper to do that? Can you use a clipper? Why are you choosing to use a scissor? Give us some of your thought process. So you, you can use a clipper, without a doubt. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. And I probably will for, for time, for speed. But I think it's important for people to see how to do this. So if you can see this hair here naturally grows across like this. So what I'm doing is I'm stretching the skin like this. You can use your fingers to stretch the skin. Okay. You tilt the neck and then you go against the grain like that. If you go against the grain, you can cut it really close. Yeah. Uh, one of the benefits, I mean, just as someone who suffers from ingrown hairs, when people clipper my neck, I get ingrown hairs. When they clean it with the scissor, I don't. So if you do have any clients, male or female, to, that get ingrown hairs. That's a great tip, mate. Yeah, when I get an ingrown hair, I never go back to that, you know, barber, let's say, because the past couple of years I've just been going to barbers to make my life easy. But uh, if they're able to clean it with the scissor, then it would work so much better for me. It's a really, really good tip, that is, mate. Michael Michaels from Australia wants to know what kind of scissors you're using. Okay, thank you for your question, Michael. So these are um, our own branded scissors, Alaron scissors, and um, we basically, it's taken me about two and a half years to get them to this level. Um, they're produced by a company called Wings, um, which is a, a An Japanese, old favorite, old yeah. classic. And we've basically had them modify the classic wing to basically fit the hand slightly differently. Um, they weigh 3.5 grams which is really important the weight of the scissor and they're very very pointy so the tips you can work on some really really detailed work that's really really important and uh, they're only 5.25 so we've made them so that way they're offset on the base um, I like how you change, change the um, tension screw from yeah. the traditional wings it's yeah. much flatter yeah so better for one length yeah, exactly. even barbering yeah exactly. it makes it cutting lines much easier and if someone was interested in purchasing these where, where would they find them yeah I mean if they want to if they want to have a little look at our website Alon uh, www.alloneducation.com um, we've got obviously a, a tool section where we sell brushes and, and you guys also sell this neck shield somebody yeah. asked about that it's a great neck shield from Japan and that's on the Alilon website, which is at alilon.com? So it's, yeah, so it's www.alilon.education.com. And um, if you go onto the product page, you'll have lots of different stuff there. So here's a great question coming in from Reed Alexandra. So essentially she's asking, what is your tactic within designing artistic haircuts as far as planning for the grow out process? Okay. So when you're doing these stronger outlines, which you know can make the haircut so much more expressive and creative, how do you work with the client on, on growing it out? Okay, very good question. Who, who said that? Who asked that uh, Reed Alexandra. Reed, very good question. I love that question. And the reason why I love it is because it has an element of um, something that we get asked all the time. At the end of the day, how you should think about it is like this. And this is how I, I like to explain it to clients. Clients change their bags, their handbags, their shoes, their clothes. They change it all the time. Hair should be the same. You should change it all the time. You should have fun with it. You should, you should allow someone to be expressive and allow someone to be creative because the only reason clients tend to sit in boxes is because we put them there. If we, if we get them to understand that they have millions of options, millions of options, right. people are not scared, but we, we just... A lot of times the hairdressers yeah, are scared because we, we don't, they don't have the technique the time, or the training or the yeah, time. Or time. Time is a big thing. Yeah, big time. yeah, if you're running 25 minutes behind and someone wants a creative... Oh, what do you think? How do you think I'd look with bangs? Yeah. I, don't, I don't think it would yeah. work. <laughs> I'm not sure about come today. Back, yeah. Come back next week. Yeah. It might work, but today it might not work. I'm not sure about today. Um, so I think the, the, the beauty of it is um, to make sure that you... Uh, understand that or you communicate to your, your, your customer that their hair should be like a, a, a handbag they should change it all the time they should express themselves they should have fun with their hair and things like neck hair they should you should see it a little bit like a fringe trim people should come in it will take you takes you three or four minutes to just reshape someone's hairline um, and, you know, a general rule of thumb is the more often you can get a client into your salon, exactly. the more revenue they'll generate for your salon. Yeah. So even if you're just saying, hey, come in in two weeks and I'll clean your neck, she might buy a product, yeah. she might buy a lipstick, she might stop for a makeup touch-up, yeah. she might tip someone who brought them a coffee. Yeah, or, so, or you also think, okay, well, you know, your roots actually looking a bit. Yeah. Maybe we should have a bit of color on there. Or So it can know. be a really good thing. I think, you know, what's really interesting if you think about the history of haircutting is when stronger shapes came into prominence in the late 60s, 
women were coming in way more often for haircuts and the whole Sassoon revolution was that you'd come in every four or five weeks to keep your haircut perfect. Yeah. Then as hair got a lot longer and it became more about color, a lot of clients come in more often for their color and way less often for their cut. Imagine if they were doing both. Big time. You know, if they had a cut that took more maintenance and a collar that took more maintenance, in the end they'll be happier and the salon will be making more revenue, yeah, which is what it's all about. So what are we looking for now on this beautiful product wall? We've got, we've got an amazing... You've got a lot of choices on the Dalvin as well. Product. Yeah. I'm going, to use, I'm going to use a little bit of Love Smooth, okay? So Love Smooth basically is a product that you can use to smooth dehydrated bleached hair. It's a really good product that you can use. Um, and what I'm going to do, you don't need to use a lot of it, especially when the hair's short. And you can see you can see the shine in it. That's because it's very moisture based. Um, one of the beautiful things about uh, the product ranges is that they really try and be quite bespoke for different textures. And the bleached bleached hair, Momo is really good, really really good for hydrating the hair. So I'm going to run it through the hair, okay? And I'm going to blow dry my lengths, um, and you're going to start to see the internal shape come alive a lot more. Um, and then I'm going to do, sorry mate. Just want to make uh, sure you're plugged in over here. A bit of a key, key focus will be the shape that I'll put in after. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start to work this hair away from the face. So I want to work a bit more of a kind of quiffy type feeling with my length. Um, but at the same time, I've worked a lot from wet to dry. So my shape shouldn't, should take me maximum five minutes to, to, to blow dry. Thank you. So I'm going to use a vest brush to blow dry the hair. Can okay. you explain a little bit about that brush as opposed to a round brush or Definitely. Uh, you know, a Mason Pearson brush? And of course, we're going to try and talk as loudly as we can while Johnny blow dries. So ideally, um, the difference is quite simple. If you look at a vest brush, in effect, it's half of a round brush. Okay. So it gives you basically a bit of a bevel, but it doesn't get the hair too, too, too full. Um, it allows you to wrap dry the hair quite easily and if you look at wrap drying, if I can give you some tips on wrap drying this might help you. Uh, imagine the head is like a big clock, okay? This is 12 o'clock, this is 6 o'clock, this is 9 o'clock and so forth. Start wrapping your, your, your haircut and think of it like a clock, you're going from 6 to 12, 12 to 6, 3 to 6 and so forth and, you, and you're constantly rotating the hair and the idea behind wrap drying is that the air circulates, that's why we try to avoid using a nozzle. Um, Try not to over, the haircut should do the work really, so I'm not really focused on getting a massive uh, detail work on my blow dryer. It's amazing, if you have a lot of patience with wrap drying, you can get some really beautiful effects. Um, and, and attainable for the client. I think, you know, sometimes a really over blow dried, it might look really impressive in the salon, but it can be so hard for the client to attain that, that sometimes it, it's kind of a big letdown for them, where teaching wrap drying, it does smooth and it brings out beautiful volume and it is attainable. If I mean, they have the patience to brush their hair, they can get it done. I think you're right. I think the, um, one of the things you've got to remember is that the idea behind wrap drying is that the haircut does all the work for you. So you shouldn't have to manipulate the hair into shape. Um, in this scenario, I'm going to dry the front a bit quickly. So I will be doing a little bit of kind of uh, tension drying, but the majority of it basically will be wrap drying. And the idea of wrap drying is the principle of allowing the air to circulate, stretching the hair around the bend of the hair. Um, it plays with the principles of alpha and beta keratin. So for those of you who are not quite sure what that means, um, alpha and beta keratin, think about it a bit like this, okay? Um, when the hair is in its most natural state, let's just say you wash it and leave it alone, the hair is in what we call an alpha keratin state. As soon as you manipulate, blow dry, do any kind of a manipulation of the hair, it then has a state of beta keratin state. Once you go back into moisture, or the hair comes back into contact with moisture, it becomes alpha keratin state again. The principles of blow drying is not actually the heat, it's the cooling process. So when we're trying to set the hair, like now, I want the hair to become quiffy and, and pull back. So instead of wrap drying, I'm actually going to start at the back, okay, and I'm going to use tension drying. So I'm going to use the first two teeth of my brush. Okay, and I'm going to slowly elevate the hair and pull it back. 
So that grabs the hair, that rotating movement around. Exactly. Yeah, we used to call it leafing. It's okay. like leafing through the pages of a book. Okay. It's like you're turning the page. That's not so Yeah, that's kind of, it's the same action as grabbing the page and turning it. That's not so And that, that gives you the tension you need at the root there, yeah. So the, the, the basic idea is the hair naturally grows forward. So what I need is the root to go backwards. So I need to dry it backwards. Thanks, okay. Nanette. Nanette is uh, really loved watching, but she's got a client, so she's got to go, but she's going to look at the reruns. Good. Nanette, thank you for watching. I appreciate your, your tuning in. I really do. So, another way of thinking about wrap drying is think about it a little bit like this. This is how I like to explain it when I'm teaching in the classroom. Think about like an ice sculptor, okay? An ice sculptor will get a big block of ice, and he'll pull it out into the heat and then he'll mold it with his tools and he'll chip away at it. And it's and funny that you mentioned that. I saw you sculpting some ice at your crafts festival, <laughs> which I want you to talk a little bit about. Okay. I, I, it's funny that he brings up ice sculpting. I was looking for pictures of Johnny today and there's one of him with a chisel and a big block of ice mm -hmm. at this festival that he helps to sponsor in, in London. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about that crafts festival. Okay, so pretty cool. The, the crafts event basically was an event that we held uh, Alan on put it together and it was supported by Davinus which I which is fantastic um, and basically what we did is we hired Spitterfield Market we had about 1,000 1,400 people turn up in the end um, and we had like ice sculptors wood sculptors uh, sand sculptors graffiti artists we had lots of different uh, people who we class as being craftsmen and the idea was that we hired the market we built some like really cool kind of wooden walls around the space and we had lots of different craftsmen using or doing their own version of crafts so in between like this wood sculpture and this ice sculpture and clay sculptures we had hairdressers cutting hair and the idea was to try and get people to understand that hair cutting or hair dressing full stop is a craft within itself and the only way we can elevate that the only way we can elevate that is by putting it alongside other crafts um, to slowly change the perception of what we do. So by, it was nice because you had like, um, the same way a wood sculptor would use wood to carve in a beautiful shape or an ice sculptor would use ice as their, their, kind, of, their kind of material. We use hair um, and that's the, beauty of, that's the beauty of what we do. And what we need to do, by the way, I'm using my fingers now because I want to avoid setting the hair and making it look too dressed. So you control the, the roots and the direction with the vest brush. Somebody asked what type of brush that is. That's a vest brush. Owlon has branded one, but uh, you can find vest brushes on their website or really any, anywhere that sells high quality Japanese tools, Hairbrain Pro or Owlon. Now you're moving to the fingers. Tell us a little bit about that finger drying. Okay, so by using finger drying, I'm allowing the air to circulate inside the hair a bit better and I'm allowing the hair to have a bit of a bend to it, you see, because when you use a brush, obviously you stretch out the bend. Um, so what I'm doing is I try to get my root lift and then I'm allowing the hair to start to have its natural movement to it now. And what will happen is, it, in the end, it will be like, a, I'm really focused on getting the root going upwards. That's a really important thing. When I'm not, if you notice, I'm not focused on the ends. I don't care what the ends do because I want them to be loose and I don't want them to be too set looking. So one of our longtime community members and good friends, uh, Matthew, I'm not even going to try to pronounce his last name, but he's known as Mr. Scribbles. Okay. Have you Hi, ever Mr. seen his drawings? He does incredible drawings. Oh, wow. He's got a beautiful five point that he did for me, but it's all in scribble. It's incredible. Okay, cool. He's been asking, um, he's an artist uh, as well as a hairdresser, but a graphic uh, and a, he's, I don't want to get the terms wrong because he's, he's always got his great terminology, but he's asking, spe speaking of art, is there a non-representational or abstract artist that you're a fan of, that inspires you? And I know you guys are always referencing artists with your collections. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, there's, there's a couple of uh, people which I think are incredible. We're in New York, so let me, I can't, I can't not mention Chuck Close. Um, Chuck, Chuck Close, Close is mind-blowing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the guy, the, the, the way he, pl I, don't know, I don't know how much everyone knows about his work, but some of the stuff that he does, not just the detail, not me just the Me and Kelly were once in a restaurant with him at the same time. Get out of it. Yeah, he was, he was coming out, uh, he, you know, he's in a wheelchair, and yeah. he was, they put out a special ramp for him and he was rolling out and I was like, oh my God, it's Chuck Close. And he did like, you know, look at us and I didn't want to bother him, but he was incredible. Let me just, before I carry on, let me just so I can keep cutting. I'm going to show you something I want to do. So I'm going to cut 
a, a wiggly line running through the shape, okay? So if you watch what I'm doing, the key now is to look at the movement of the root, okay? I need the hair to sit down naturally. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start in the back, okay? And I'm gonna cut, this is a really cool thing to do. Uh, I'm gonna show you something which a lot of people do nowadays, but uh, I'm gonna give you some tips on how to do it uh, to get really nice execution. When you're doing this, the angle of your blade is really imperative, so I'm keeping my blade completely horizontal, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start in the back, okay? And your scissors need to be really sharp when you do this. I'm gonna go down, and then I'm gonna go round. And then I'm gonna go down. And then I'm gonna go round again. A little bit more wiggle. That's it. And what that does, a bit like a wiggly shape that runs through my haircut, which I think is quite cool. And now I've put the basic shape in, I'm going to try and get it eye level. So I've got this fantastic chair that the good brush brought in. Yeah. Um, and then what you do is now that you get the eye level with you, you then start to work with the tips of your scissors a lot more. Okay and you really focus on that line and I'm chipping it because I don't want it to be, I don't want it to sit too hard. Josh Lamonica is giving you some props right we now for your line work. just shocked our live viewers. Yeah. <laughs> Good, well, I'm glad they liked it. But the idea behind this is it gives that little bit of a feature running through the hair. And once you get the basic shape in, then what you do is you can get the clipper. So if I grab that clipper, I'll show you. A little tip. Okay, so, thanks mate. When you're doing this, try not to kind of um, run your clipper from side to side. Try and think of it as in going in and out like that, okay? And what you do is you basically take your clipper in, hold it, and come out. In. Try and think of it as back and forward rather than side to side. So don't basically do that. And the reason why you don't, I try to avoid doing that, is that this hair here gets, touches the, the, the clipper and then moves and gets cut. And you definitely don't want that. You can use the tip of the clipper. Okay, and when I'm doing that, I'm using my little finger to stabilize the clipper and my hand to make sure the head doesn't move. Okay. And I'm basically drawing with my, with the clipper. And this is really cool. I know you guys do these things over here called barber battles. They're quite interesting. Um, and I know barbering, they, they use these kind of techniques a lot in the barbering world. But I think personally, it's quite nice to have a little play in the feminine side of it. So again, come around the back. Just go in and hold it on the scalp. Try not to rotate it. Try not to go from side to side. And what will happen is, the cleaner you get that, that, that line, the more obvious it will be on camera, or the more obvious it will be tomorrow when she does it herself. It's definitely obvious. Yeah. It's in there, that's really strong and expressive. I think that's uh, really pushing it to a whole nother level. Just don't be scared, don't be scared, never be scared. That's that's the best piece of advice I can give anybody, anybody who wants to cut hair. Well, you know, I'm sure you're, uh, I've heard of my good friend DJ Muldoon, and his, uh, he does a lot of classic haircutting training, and, and the name of it is Knowledge Destroys Fear. That's nice. So I think that's why, you know, people can be afraid is because they don't have the, the technical knowledge, you know, and then you get, you can get really fearful because you get yourself into, I'm sure every hairdresser can relate to getting yourself into some place that you don't know how to get out of. Definitely. Or that you didn't e expect to be in. But if you have all your fundamentals down, scissor control, clipper control, understanding lines and layers and graduation, then I think, you know, that's that whole knowledge destroys fear concept. Yeah, definitely. I mean, at the end of the day, you have to just celebrate your, your, your mistakes, that's what I would say. And that's not just in hairdressing, that's in life or in business. Now, as you do some of the detail work, then one of the things I wanted to ask you about is um, you're doing regular broadcast yourself, kind of an Alalon Live or an yeah. Alalon Unplugged. Yeah. 
and I think that that's a phenomenal series. And I want you to talk a little bit about that. Thanks, but I especially want you to talk about the one where you had Christopher Brooker, yeah. who, uh, you know, for me is obviously a legendary icon. And the hair, hairdresser that trained me at Sassoon Vernon was someone that was trained by Christopher. So I feel like a direct link back to him, and I've had a few chances to meet him. Tell us a little bit about, about that and where people can go and watch it. Cool. I mean, every Tuesday, uh, well, m me and Ped, we were, we were talking about... Um, you know, what are we going to do this year that's going to really try and really make a difference? And um, our company philosophy is all about sharing. I mean, if anyone knows anything about Alilon, that's our number one. The word Alilon means, uh, it's ancient Greek for the principles of sharing. So one of the things that we focus on is trying to share knowledge with people that maybe might not, have, might not be easy to access. So every Tuesday, we do something called an Alilon Unplugged. And what it is, it's me or one of the team or someone, um, at the moment quite a lot of it has been myself, um, doing a haircut live um, on Facebook. So if you go on to the Alon Education fan page, okay, it will enable you to, to see. Let me actually, before I talk about that, sorry, let me just tell you what I'm doing with the top. So my choice of length on top, I'm coming at the crown, I'm splitting the hair at the crown. Now this is really important. The reason I'm starting at the crown is obviously because that's the bit that has the most movement in it. So by starting at the crown, I've taken a horizontal section and I've cut a square cutting line, okay? And then what I'm gonna do, from that point there, I'm gonna come down vertically and I'm gonna cut a round cutting line. The reason why I'm cutting a round cutting line is because I want the hair to hug the head. And by working a round cutting line, I'm building no corners, so the hair will basically have no weight to it, so it will hug the head really nicely okay so I'm working vertical sections and cutting a vertical shape all the way down so yeah so every Tuesday if you want to tune in uh, it's live on Facebook um, it's on the Alilon fan page okay so it's Alilon education fan page it's at seven o'clock uh, UK time and basically every week I try and show something different so I either do like a curly look or a straight look or uh, short hair or long hair or whatever it is and we try to just share as much as we can. And, and um, that's what I love about Hairbrain, you guys, what you guys are doing. I mean, that's the reason why, you know, I decided with Davinus to come out here because you guys, what you guys are doing is different level. Um, and the Alon Unplugged events are purely to try and share the Alon language, the Alon philosophy, what we're passionate about, and really connect with people as much as we can. And uh, going back to what you said about Christopher Brooker, um, Christopher Brooker, the guy's a legend, and oh, he's to, beyond a legend. Yeah, yeah, to, to have to have uh, him documented is something that so many people wouldn't have a chance to see, and it was really important for me to give him that kind of exposure because he's at, he's at a point now where in his career in his journey, where actually before I carry on, let me just what I'm going to do now. Can you see I've got this big corner from the last haircut that she had? What I want to do. Is I'm gonna, I want to keep some of that because otherwise I'll cut the bend out. So I'm going to take a vertical section from the forehead to the crown, using the crown as a guide. Okay, I'm going to cut a round cutting line, but I'm not going to club cut it. I'm not going to cut a clean line. I'm going to cut it with the tips of my scissors so that it's quite raw. Okay, so I'm using the crown as the guide, and I'm going to use a chipping technique to create a shattered, soft line. So yeah, we had um, a night with Christopher, basically, and it was incredible. I mean, so inspirational. The guy's different level. I mean, the guy's a legend, an absolute legend. And um, it's really important that we never forget the past because the past is what sets the foundations in which the future is now being built. Um, what we're trying to do, Alilon, is, is trying to change the way people see hair, the way people talk about hair, the way people think about hair. But you can't, you can't just be uh, ignorant to the past and how we got to that stage. So by giving someone like Christopher Brooker that kind of exposure, first of all, you've got thousands and thousands of hairdressers who are watching it who would never ever, wouldn't even know the name Christopher Brooker, which for me blows my mind. Um, and uh, we had loads of people tuning in and it was, it was fantastic, a really good event. And the following week we had, um, sorry, two weeks later we had Nikki Pope. Yeah, I watched that. You guys yeah. did a little interview. Yeah. Nikki's uh, an editor, publisher of uh, Tribute, magazine. Tribute Magazine which in is, London. Which is probably one of, in my opinion, is one of the best magazines 
on the planet. Yeah, um, it's a great, great hair magazine. And, uh, Absolutely. And to have to have her time for an hour, just asking her about, you know, for example, uh, the awards, how to get. And a lot of people are into like competitions and stuff. So getting a lot of people to understand what makes a good photograph, what the editors look for, you know, um, getting people to interact and listen to what she, her genuine opinion is, um, I think is a priceless me personally. Amazing. So all these different components or zones are starting to come together now through the top. Yeah. We've got kind of the, the, the two different sides that were separated by the wiggle, and then you have this bit of length through the top now that you're kind of defining with the tips of the scissors. So I'm, I'm trying not to create too much of a solid shape through the top. So I'm using a pointing technique. Now when you're using a pointing technique, uh, feel free to go directly in with the scissors. Don't go in at an angle. Um, and when you're doing this, oh, sorry. Can I grab another cup? Thank you, mate. Um, when you're doing this with your scissors, go directly in. Don't go at an angle. And depending on how deep you want to go, will determine on the. So um, that was a great technical the, tip. So what, if people go in on a on a diagonal angle, what what would happen differently from going in vertically? Yeah, so and you, when might you choose to go in on a diagonal angle? Okay, angle? so. When I went in, when I actually cut the initial length from the top, I was going in on diagonals like that. And what happens is you create what we call a solid but slightly shattered shape, um, rather than the club cutting technique, which will basically be that. By doing that, you still create a, sh a clean line, but it's slightly more broken. Um, but with pointing, if you do the same techniques, if I go in like that, I'm going to just get a big hole in the haircut. So what I tend to do, and this is, a, I think, some good little tips for you when it comes to pointing. Even though you're pointing and you're using freehand, you should still be in control of what you're doing. So one of the big things that I see people doing is they do this. Watch this. Let me show you from the beginning. So people will section the hair off, okay? They'll pick the hair up, and then they'll just go go for it. And they'll just be like, bang, 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 bang. Now the problem with this is that you're not stopping at the same point every time. So what I tend to do is I tend to have my hand positioned, I open and close my scissors, and I go start from one side, and rather than going back and forward with my hand, I go across like that. And what happens is it's much more consistent. And also another good little tip for you is count. So for example, when you're pointing, rather than just randomly going for it, what I would advise you to do is go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So each section, for example, do nine. So it's consistent. Getting a nice rhythm and yeah. consistency to, the, to, the, to create the same density on every section. Yeah. Want to give a shout out to some of our um, very supportive community members, Benita Rodriguez, watching. She's loving all the information. Johnny, thank you for sharing. It's a pleasure. And Jeremy Hickson is here. Jeremy, I wore my blazer for you tonight. I'm taking things very seriously here. Very business appropriate. Thanks for joining us. Okay, so uh, it looks like you're getting close to the end here. I but am. This is kind of the most important part, isn't it? Making the right decisions in the finishing. Yeah, I mean, I think the thing is now is it's the detail work now, isn't it? So now is the point where you basically put your signature on the shape. So using the tips of my scissors, using a chipping technique to really personalize my line and get it super clean. And what I'll do is I'll use, I'll use product in a minute to style the hair. Is there something in particular I can grab for you? I'm going to use um, the um, Angelo's hairspray, which is a... a Angelo's a, hairspray, which is the Your Hair Assistant exactly. line, the perfecting hairspray? Exactly. So, um, Angelo, Why do you call it Angelo's hairspray, for those that don't know the Davines line? Okay, so basically, um, Angelo is an incredible hairdresser, but also a very good friend of mine. And um, Angelo's worked really closely uh, with Davines. He's there international um, major kind of figurehead and uh, he's, they've worked really closely together and working with Davinus to create this beautiful product. Um, so basically a range. line of products that Angelo Seminara developed exclusively with exactly. with Davinus called Your Hair Assistant. Exactly. And it's a beautifully packaged and beautifully performing line. And I think the, the, the beauty of it is that this particular hairspray it's like it's a bit like you get a really strong, clean finish to it, but it doesn't be too heavy. Whereas some, some hairsprays can be a little bit heavy. Um, this one isn't really that heavy. So don't be scared to use it. So it's your hair assistant. You know, William range. Perry's asking about the color. You know, Charlie came in with her hair um, colored about a month ago, and he just wants to know what's your take on the color, uh, Johnny. Good, okay, well, 
I don't know, I was talking to, to, to Charlie about it before. A lot of the, um, the colours nowadays that people are playing with is they're liking this idea of the kind of root roots and actually having the, the root hair shadow. Coloured. Yeah, they're actually having the hair coloured to leave the root quite dark and just colouring the mid lengths and ends, which is quite a common thing nowadays. Um, so I, I was quite into the fact that she's got a bit of root there. Um, for me, that was quite an, an interesting little thing. Our good friend Travis Smith, who's an educator with Sassoon in Chicago and a, and a longtime friend of mine, says it looks incredible. And he wants to also, he's a, he's a scissor junkie, probably one of the biggest ones out there. He wants to know a little bit about your scissors. Uh, I'll tell you one thing, Travis, those are made by uh, Wings. And Johnny custom designed them. So yeah. maybe tell him a little bit more about them. So basically, uh, two years back and forward from Japan, um, making sure that they are kind of bespoke for Adelon. And um, it's, we've kind of changed the weight of them. We've changed the the uh, the, the the bolt on the you know the, the knuckle on the the tension screw. Head down for me, though. Now let me just show you one thing. Um, through the back here with my wiggle, I'm going to allow the hair. Show us that wiggle, Johnny. I'm going to allow the hair to wiggle by itself. Yeah, baby. Yeah, and the haircut will do the work for me. And the zone has allowed me to create that shape. And again, can you see how much products I'm using? It's, you can't really overload it. It's a really cool hairspray to use to be able to get that shape. It's your hair assistant. Yeah, my hair assistant, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so I've come to the end of my styling. Okay, now I'm gonna I can tell you've been spending a lot of time at Fashion Week. Yeah. What I'm gonna do now is use a little bit of the oil, oil on the external shape, and then I'm done. Voila. Yeah, I'm done. And I think the, what's interesting about this shape is that the haircut does all the work for me. So I'm going to use a little bit of the oil oil, which is on here. Oil by Davinus. I only need maximum two pumps of this. And then, I think when once the gown comes off and you see you see her in her full glory, the haircut will come alive. I think it's really important to be able to um, to see see her standing up. I'm just going to play with the ends of the hair. Let it do its thing. That's my little bit of this connection that I had behind the ear. Can you remember? Well, I didn't connect the back in. And I style it with some oil. Good. Awesome. We want to give a big shout out to Davinez for... Uh, Charlie, you look so good. Yeah. Yeah, Charlie, that's amazing. Big shout out to Davinez for uh, bringing Johnny in for this special edition of HB Live. Big shout out to Johnny Athana coming all the way from London, from Alalon Education, Anna Salon. Um, great we spending time with you, brother, and thanks for all the inspiration and sharing uh, all your passion and, and love of the craft. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in, in, guys. And we'll see you next week. Be safe. If not sooner, actually Sunday.